Hello, my darlings. I hope you are having a lovely day. I am unwell, but I just got off the phone. Well, I just got off WhatsApp with my primary partner and wanted to do a little recording out of just being so grateful for my partner and for books, specifically reading books to people. My primary partner and I have been long distance to varying degrees the entire time we've been together. And one of the unifying things is my partner sends me articles and I debate with them on the articles that are sent. We've actually progressed the farther the distance that we are apart. We have progressed to reading actual books rather than just excuse me, rather than just articles. It's just probably the best way to maintain a really healthy connection, no matter what distance you're at, because when we're reunited, we still, we still read aloud to each other. Yeah, you just, you get to know a person in such a different way when, first of all, you share a piece of writing that's, that you've connected with in some way. Like, there's, there's something a little bit vulnerable about that, and you hope that they'll have reactions that, you know, um, are in keeping at least partly with yours often. But what's been really fascinating is just the process of figuring out, like, where those divergences happen. And how to negotiate, like, does it matter that this divergence exists? Is this something that actually impacts how the relationship happens? It's just... It's actually been one of the most educational experiences, not just from the content of what we read to one another, but also in the getting to know you process. Because some of these topics of conversation might pop up, but the depth to which we investigate them and our like investigate our own opinions and and what prominence that plays in ideals and whether a partner needs to share those ideals. It's happened in a much more thorough way than it has in any of my other partnerships. It's just been an absolute joy. Um, Not without its speed bumps, but like, God, educational and fantastic and beautiful. So this evening, my partner read to me, so the guy who writes Slate Star Codex also writes fiction. And while I disagree with quite a lot of his nonfiction writing and um, uh, like his opinion, it's, it's largely opinion pieces and conditionally agree with some of what he writes. Um, His fiction is actually quite good. Um, This evening we were reading the proverbial murder mystery absolute comedy from start to finish dark but hilarious um it was probably the best wordplay I've enjoyed all year so far it was grand I don't want to give away any spoilers y'all should read it I would recommend and then I was reading to my partner Lady Susan because turns out they don't know that one and Not only have they not read the book, they've not watched the movie adaptation, which means I get to make them listen to the book first. (laughs) So that's been fun. And we also have in the works, we always have multiple things going at once. We also are reading Catch-22, which is my partner's probably favorite book ever. Um which I just learned this evening, gets much, much darker. Despite the fact that we're already halfway through, it only gets darker. Right now it's like twilight level dark with satire. And then apparently we are about to get into the part that is like pitch black, no moon. The sun might never come up again. Level dark with satire. (laughs) But luckily... We're also reading the sequel to Dear Committee Members. And Dear Committee Members, if you are in academia, 
I don't know whether to recommend this book or tell you to never read it. Um, <laughs> it is absolute comedy, but also profoundly depressing because it is an entirely too accurate depiction of the politics and social dynamics of academia. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm just going to leave it there. Another epistolary novel. The sequel is not written in memos. Um, the first one is written in, in memos, which charming and actually very accurate to academia. <laughs> like emails and memos. But the, the sequel is not written that way and gets much more into the personal lives. So I'm actually less interested in the sequel, though it is still well written. So I didn't really have a point of recording this other than I just feel awful. <laughs> but also so grateful to have a partner that is considerate enough to read to me when they know I've had an awful week <laughs> and in terms of health and when nothing else is able to pick me up they read to me so yeah this is just me trying to focus on the silver lining and it's actually a lot more than a silver lining it's a damn beautiful thing so I guess in conclusion this is me recommending to one and all that if you want to find fun ways to stay connected with people who are far away or who are very close, read together. And not just buddy reads. Buddy reads are great, but like actually read together. Because, you know, Netflix and chill doesn't work for all of us. Or it doesn't work for all of us all the time. So... Why not give reading a try? We're all bookworms anyways. And on that note, I'm going to go take a really hot shower and hope that my dinner stays down and <laughs> go to bed. I hope you all are not having a sick time and are healthy and well and happy and united with your loved ones. So cheers, and until I see you next time.